Hello everyone, it's again your boy from Changwani's Eastbourne. Again, we are live now here in one of the village of this refugee camp, uh, which is Nyambogo. And we are here with different students, two of them, one a girl and one a boy from different universities. And uh, we are here to interview them a few questions about what is happening to them in this village. So I'm going to welcome one by one and they say introduce themselves to you, the viewers, and you get to know them better. I'm going to start by the right. You're welcome. Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Eastbourne. Mm. Uh, I'm by the name Kitara Alex, uh, a student from Deje University, uh, pursuing a bachelor's degree in computer science. I'm in my third year. This is Nyambogo village. Wow. Thank you so much. Then to the left, one and only lady. I'm called Aleng Rose from Gurwe village. Uh, I'm studying from Bugema University. Uh, but you thank you so much you've had their different names so I'll, uh, to my students I'm going to ask you do you always face any challenge during your education career if I may ask you yeah mm -hmm. I do okay please tell us about it briefly uh, first and foremost mm, as a student of the university uh, there are many challenges that I always face. Uh, online studies that the school is in the process of initiating is a little bit difficult to me. So that's one of the biggest challenges that I'm getting. Oh. Oh, I see. So, meaning access to, 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 to in-learning is now a very big problem to you. Uh, that's the major thing, I think. Eh? Yeah. So, the rest is just minor, minor, I understand. Eh? Exactly. Yeah. So, Rose, do you have any other challenge that you face or you're okay with everything? I'm not okay with everything. Okay. How can I be okay with everything? <laughs> so, I'm in a village. Of course, you know what it means in the village. There is no electricity. There is even we don't have smartphones. Then you have, there's no way you can just go and charge from anywhere. We are, okay. face, we are facing a lot of problems like okay. uh, for example charging, e-learning, we can't we can't really manage to make it. So most of you are having the, the, the major challenge. Yes. So as the university student what impact have you done in your community if I may ask you again? Well my impact to the community yes i see <laughs> <laughs> yeah first and foremost uh where i live mm. Mm. i live in a community where the students mm. also go to school mm. students always admire the life of being at the university not that they can study hard so that they can reach that level of the university mm. and so that kind of advice is a little important for them. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I see. Yeah. Okay, Rose, do you do you have any impact as a university student in your community here? Yes, mm -hmm. I have. Because whenever they see us, mm. of course, I'm a girl. I'm a lady. Yes. Like, actually, they feel so much when they look at me. They be like, eh, "Will I reach at that level?" Of course, I did a lot of impact by gathering all the ladies sometimes mm. within my village mm. and then even beyond my village, I do a lot of like encouraging them on how to do with education, how to manage life. It's not, of course, easy to reach, but you have to actually put yourself into it and then you actually, you, you, you need to be someone who wants something. You know? If you want something, you have to fight for it. So I make sure I talk to them sometimes whenever I get time. Mm. And with this corona, actually people are so demoralized because of actually what is hap what is going on. Of yeah. course, you don't know what will happen tomorrow. Oh, that is what I do. I always motivate them by oh. talking to them. I see. I see now where you're heading. So uh, as your education inspired these young refugees, this young generation, you know, as you as a university student, you're just for the very big young, young people. In, in fact, these refugees, these other young refugees in the community, how has it inspired the education as a person? Well, my education has inspired them in such a way that uh, 
the student themselves get admired to being at the level where I am and this has actually made them to work hard it has made them to work hard academically financially and economically you know through the guide given to them by parents so that's it okay Rose, as I think you are satisfied because even looking at you, you just look at somebody very huge and important here. Yes. Yes. So how has it inspired these people in the community, these refugees that are around you? You see, it is hard. Eh? Mm. It is hard for our refugee, for, for us refugees, of course. Mm. But of course, when you reach at the university, there is someone who is looking at you, at you and be like, I also want, I wish I'm that girl. Mm. So me, myself, I know I have inspired a lot of girls around and boys mm. but because we are financially down mm. and uh, actually things are not okay with us some of them they be like they ask themselves how did she manage to reach at that level but also i will try my best and reach to that level if all goes well of course the challenges are there but have inspired a lot of people around uh, i see so now you can see you've inspired this other young girl i see so now you can see you've inspired this other young generation could be even this young generation could be in primary schools could be in secondary school and those want to reach where these other students have been so as refugees in this community what do you think should be done for this other young generation of refugees so that at least they can reach to universities higher institutions of learning or even some other colleges of higher learning what do you think should be done to them so they can reach even where you've reached as refugees because we, we believe they have a lot of challenges of reaching to the universities but for you reach what do you think should be done so they can reach to the level you've reached in well uh, there's a lot needed to yes. be done as per the refugee status or as per the improvement of the education background of our refugee students first and foremost uh, we have many organizations within the settlement camp. Mm. Uh, I would suggest, if possible, uh, they should come out with the criteria of making sure that they start uh, are giving scholarships to students uh, from primary level. Mm. If they can start paying uh, pupils from primary school level to a higher level that would be well and good uh, another alternative would be uh, coming out with voc uh, vocationalization practice can as well aim higher by you know making them go to a higher level of institutions such as the university yes. yeah those are the few that I can do okay. thanks okay. thank you so much of course like uh, what should be done to the refugee pupils and students at large? That, of course, he talked of NGOs. Yes, they have to do something. Also, as well as our parents, they should also contribute to, to, to their children. Of course, when someone sends your child to school, you have to buy books, pens, and whatever. So parents also should play their role of sending kids to school. And then also the, the schools, they are supposed to at least build, because distance from here to Kasonga, here to Kiangwale, it's very far for some pupils. So these NGOs, they should come up together and they work hard to support refugees. Education is a key. So they should do something to refugees' uh, children to at least make their life, at least to, 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 to manage them, reach their future goals. So uh, I, I suggest they do something of that kind, maybe even like the, 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 on this vocational school. They should, there are so many vocational schools, sorry. Mm -hmm. And then they can also register, like for example, I had NRC. His parents also should play their role of sending kids to school. And then also the, the schools, they are supposed to at least build because distance from here to Kasonga, here to Kiangwale, it's very far for some pupils. So these NGOs, they should come up together and they work hard to support refugees. Education is a key. So they should do something to refugees' 
better children to at least make their life at least to 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 to, to manage them reach their future goals mm -hmm. so uh i i suggest they do something of that kind maybe even like the the, the on this vocational school they should there are so many vocational, vocational schools sorry mm -hmm. and then they can also register like for example i had nrc is registering uh these children within the camp to go for vocational planning something like skills which is good because when you know how to do something you cannot wait you cannot be unemployed you can just go and do it to get your money so they should do that in order to help our us and the refugee people that large wow, that is very brilliant you see they are in fact they are from the universe you've had their response you've had their says you've had their suggestions and what they feel about this whole thing. To our viewers, we still remain as Changwal News. Have a very beautiful day. May God bless you all. We love you all. Bye-bye for now.